Tired of those beauty channels that jump from one new thing to another where everything is the best thing ever and never come back to the purchases they made? Then this video is for you and this channel is for you, so please consider subscribing to it. Today I will talk about my newest purchases after using them a little bit. So I will tell you what was worth splurging on, what was not worth. I will provide also comparisons with other luxury brands because I think that something here is dupable, but I haven't seen any significant comparison with these palettes. When this collection, that is the Byzance collection by Chanel, was released, I was sold by the storytelling. Because Byzantine period has left many beautiful examples in churches. We have Ravenna here in Italy, that is an outstanding example of the Byzantine era. So the theme was intriguing and also the execution. I was really attracted by a few palettes and therefore I made a video that is this one that I recommend watching after this because I wanted to find something in my luxurious collection because 90-90% of my collection is luxury and high-end. I wanted to find dupes because these colors are not really revolutionary especially when it comes to the neutral quads. And then I will tell you now how it worked. So I didn't purchase all the palette in one go. I actually went to a physical store and I swatched this palette. This this is Parure Venitienne 318. This was the most evocative to me, reminiscent of Venice and the art, the culture behind that. This meant a lot to me and I wanted to watch it in person. I did it and I bought it. Then I tried it and I was a bit underwhelmed in the sense that the dupes that <laughs> I identified in the video about these palettes were spot on. So I said, okay, this is nice. I'm happy to have it, but I wanted to try the cooler version. And I started thinking about this color, the impossibility for me to dupe it in a good way. So I said, okay, I, I will buy it. So it's also a safe choice because these are all colors that I can use a lot. So I then purchased online this palette that is Parure Crystal and this is the 328. And then I said, okay, I stick to the neutral quads, but the most significant palette that summarized the concept of the Byzantine period is this one that is called Baroque 338. These are quite pricey because they are 65 euros a pop so I would like to offer you some comparisons. First, now that I have the real thing, I will compare the dupes in that older video about these palettes. And afterwards, I want to concentrate, to focus on the green and swatch it. I purchased this palette mainly for the green. I never use all these colors. This is a companion palette to me and I would use only these two or just the green. So I will take advantage of the natural lightning here. So this palette Parure Venitienne uh, is a bit sheer. So I understand why most of the people say that these are not pigmented. I mean, they are, it's not that they are not pigmented, it's just that uh, the colors are light. They pick up very easily, but you need to build up a bit the color to show out on the skin. What I think is remarkable is the formula. This is not the traditional Tisse formula by Chanel that personally is not my favorite. I like it, but I prefer other formulas. If I have to pay so much for a quad, I would then buy a Suku quad that I like more. So I'm not a fan of that Tisse formula, but this one is not exactly like that. This has an emollient quality, a glowy quality, that you, you can, I think, see better in the gold shade here. You see how glowy it is and in, it's not a cream and it doesn't feel a cream. It's a very well pressed, it's a baked shadow, but once on the skin, it gives an emollient look that is quite flattering and unique. So this impressed me in the sense that the color story is true, is not unique. This is the most dupable, I think, of them all. 
but it's a beautiful color pairing that I've used with success at work in, in the last three weeks. Also this brown, it has some sheen and is a sheen, it's not glitter, kind of a wet look. It's not also a heavy shimmer like the Tom Ford one. I will come to that in a second. So you can see this, how fine, you see that it doesn't emphasize texture. So this is Chanel at its finest. And then you have this shiny, I cannot say glittery, it's just shine. So this is the palette, Pariur Venitienne. And I use all kinds of color combos. I really love this one. I had identified the dupe in a Surat eyeshadow that was this one, Aurora. This is very close. It was a spot on dupe. I don't think you will distinguish them. So all the people, I don't know, sometimes people, reviewers are so superficial. They said, oh my gosh, it's so unique, so beautiful. Okay, that's true. But if people have an extensive Surat collection like I have, it's exactly the same thing. The only difference is that the formula of Chanel is a tiny uh, more emollient, while this one was a bit harder. But it's the same pigment. And I know from a CEO of a competitor that I had the pleasure to talk with that Surat uses very expensive pigments. So for sure, you're, you're paying for the name here, not only for the quality, but the quality of the pigment in themselves is very high. Because of the emollient nature, the more shiny emollient nature, I've seen that these eyeshadows can tend to overblend sometimes. I admit that I had the same experience I have sometimes with Suku, that if you shear them out or you apply with a, um, with a blender, the colors blend into each other without distinction and they fade gracefully. I have to say, they fade because I never use primer. I always forget about primer in the morning. So I can tell you that at the end of the day, they fade, but they fade gracefully. That means that I haven't seen them gathering into my lines at the end of the day, like it happens with many other brands that have thicker eyeshadows. This is a fine, very refined and fine texture. For the peach, I said, okay, I can use this Prada. Now, update on this Prada. To be honest, I regret this. And I know Lexi that I, I love, I follow her. She has a update on this palette and she prefers Prada to the Chanel one. She has this palette only. But in my opinion, yeah, it's the opposite, the total opposite. And the reason is that this eyeshadow, that is the reason why I purchased this refill, gives me texture. I don't like how it evolves over time. I use my makeup mostly at the office and at the end of the day, but not, not only at the end of the day, after lunchtime, it's enough to have my lids to look creepy if I use this. So because of that, I regret purchasing this. I may declutter it in the future because I don't want to use this anymore. And also this one I tried as accent, but this pop of color, I don't know, it's too, too cool toned. Maybe I will swatch them. You, you see how much brighter and less classy. I like these desaturated color. This is much more elegant. Uh, we will go to this in a moment. But let's focus on this and the, the peach here is a kind of cream to powder. This is an amazing texture, to be honest. It has more grip compared to the Chanel one. So it stays better on the lid, it gives more impact. It is a different formula. It's more cream to powder, this one. Touch more pink compared to the Chanel one, but we are there, right? Now, the gold is the most unique color in this palette. Honestly, I couldn't find something similar to this, um, at least at first glance. It is grace in an eyeshadow because it is a sandy gold color that is shiny, but not too much. It is the perfect texture that is glowy, you see, but 
without glitters. Let me put it here. I, I, I think you can get this effect with any satin gold. But to be honest, I haven't found a spot on dupe. What I can do is to see uh, the, a comparison to this palette. That is the Tom Ford Soleil d'Hiver. And I proposed in that old video as a dupe for the gold, this peach cause it was less pink than this shade and therefore I said okay it's the level of shine of the gold and I was right as you can see the gold may be a touch more subtle compared to this baked gelée shade by Tom Ford but is much peachier of course this is by the way was the reason why I purchased this quad this peachy shade is quite unique it's light but the peach is there let me see if this may be a better match. And this one you see, it's not sandy, it's more champagne. So it lacks this sandy quality that makes this eyeshadow in the middle, the Chanel one, more subtle. So I don't have a dupe for this one, an exact dupe, but these are the comparisons with this Tom Ford Quad Soleil d'Hiver. It was a limited edition from 2019. Amazing collection here. I want to try with my Suku palette. I've seen some golds and these old Suku blend colorize. So two formulations ago, I've seen this shade here. This was a permanent quad. My gosh, it was I think number six if I remember correctly in the permanent line. And I see the sandy color here so maybe this yeah is very close i would say it's 90 percent ah another thing uh temptalia that nowadays is not reliable anymore with the, when it comes to dupes she has slowed down her activity on the blog and she proposes some automatically generated dupes without verifying them so you cannot find the percentages of similarities anymore this one this color that is from Chanel, again, Mediterranean 747. It was a limited edition from January 2022. This color is listed as dupe for this sandy color. Let, let me see how good is this. It may be, but this is definitely a different texture, more shiny. So I think that the better, yes, they are different thing. This is more glittery. The shimmer is heavier. The same thing as the Tom Ford wet and dry formula, this one and this one, especially this one is grittier. While the Suku dupe is much closer to the Chanel, with the Chanel being maybe a little bit shiny because of that emollient, seems that there's oil in it, there's emollient quality. The best dupe is a Suku and not the Chanel from the Mediterranean quad. And then the brown, honestly, with the brown, I won't waste time to try to dupe this brown. It's a reddish brown you may find everywhere. <laughs> it's not clear here from the video how shiny is even the brown. The brown also has a shiny quality in it. It's a matte with a glossy finish. I've seen something like that in Lisa Eldridge, but I ha don't have Lisa Eldridge eyeshadows at this point. You can also see there that it shines. It's like vinyl. So it's an interesting and more unique variety of texture. Actually, the, these three are almost identical. The most shiny one is the sandy color. And then you have a tad of grittiness with this eyeshadow just because of the pigment, I think. So this, as you can see, is the most dupable. My review after some times is that I love this palette, but you can definitely dupe it. So it is not essential, I think. I want to compare the two browns. Many YouTubers did that. It doesn't imply a lot of effort, right? So I can do it as well. So as you can see, while this brown from the Parure Venitienne has a pinkish hue, this one by Parure Cristal has a mauve hue. It's cooler in tone. This is more reddish, this is more mauve -ish. Maybe this, that is a natural lighting but indirect, is the best way to show you the difference between the dupes and the original. 
and the original seem finer you see there's a shimmer in all the shades but it's subtle and you can see also in the brown shades as well you see how shiny and glossy all the shades that are not the green the sparkling green so all the other shades look there's a glowy quality that was also typical of the Suku designing color eyes that has been lost with the last Suku formulation. And this glowy quality that I was so happy to find back in this Chanel release. Let's focus on this Parure Cristal instead. This is the most unique color. Unfortunately, swatches do not give justice to this color, but it's on the eyes that it shines. So it has a mauveish again quality and it translates as pink on my eyes, but a, a good type of pink because of this understated tone is not a pink that screams a eye irritation, you know. This is a lighter pink. The bluish shimmer and then finally the brown we have swatched it already but let's swatch it here so this is a more cool tone because it has a mauveish undertone in the brown we have seen that before in this middle middle toned pink you see how beautiful is the glow of these three shades these are more shimmery the two the brown is more matte but still glowy and then you have the sparkling one. There's a balance in the, the choice of the finishes that it, it what sold me these palettes. The dupe that I found in my last video, there was this surat that is called Nebula. More um, visible. Yeah, Th this is different to be honest. Yeah, so while this is a spot on dupe, this surat Aurora, this Surat Nebula is not exactly the same and you can see that here. This Nebula one is more blue like while this one is more purple, the Chanel one. This is more glittery, the Nebula one, while the Chanel one is more shimmery, less glittery. Less of a scattered like effect and more uniform shimmer. Also, now that I'm looking at them in real life, yeah, while the Nebula one seems to have a duochrome quality that shifts a bit of purple, this stays purple all the time. This is more a bluish purple. So this is more unique than I thought, but I know there's another pigment by Surat that I don't have that is the more, more purple one. So maybe that one is more similar to the Chanel one. Two points after swatching these palettes by putting them side by side, you can definitely see they're totally different. You say, okay, there's just a difference in undertone. This is warmer with the green, so more contrast. This is more mauveish, bluish, so more cohesive maybe. But they are totally different. You can tell they are two different things. And that's the reason why I wanted to purchase this one because I found that I was pleased with the formula of this one and I wanted the other variation. And another consideration is that these are kind of opalescent and light. I like this kind of makeup. That is actually my style. I like whatever is, you know, subtle, whatever is delicate and light. This is my everyday style. This is me in palettes. That's why I didn't want to miss these ones because I think this is a very beautiful collection that I don't think it has been understood very well. So let's proceed with the dupes here. In my previous video I chose this mauveish color here as a dupe of that mauveish pink but I was aware that time that this was closer to the lighter color rather than this one but closer to this one. Let's watch it here. This may be close to this one, so I will swatch it side by side. But first of all, this one has a mauve, which is, mm, is cooler. And the other thing that is the limitation of these Tom Ford baked shades is that they are too frosty for me. 
This is less shimmery, the Chanel one. So I much prefer this delicate shine compared to the more impactful, shiny effect of the Tom Ford. Anyway, this is peachier, but it's the same intensity, I have to say. Okay, and then I remember that I use a Vizier matte that I tapped that was similar to this one, and I think it's spot on. They are close, right? So this is maybe a tad cooler. The layer of color is an effect that you can get with Vizard and you don't have the glossy quality of the original Chanel. So I was quite good in duping this palette, but what makes this palette actually is the finish and the finish of this sparkling shade is different from this. Let, let's say that I can dupe it's not an exact dupe, but if you have this quad, you practically have a slightly peachy version of the Chanel one. But you can see how peculiar, how unique is the combo here. Uh, this, this color in particular is not so easy to dupe, in my opinion. While this is more common, you can dupe it quite easily, this becomes more difficult. So this is my first choice that i would recommend in case you are considering this palette so if you want to spend money on something that is, is more difficult to duplicate then uh, the parure Pari crystal is the way to go if the color story uh, is something that you may like my favorite also on the eyes is this one because it's it's not easy to find a shade of pink that it doesn't translate as an eye irritation. At the same time, it, it looks pink and not peach. This is my perfect pink palette that Pat McGrath didn't manage to provide to me. This is the original and this is the dupe. You may create something similar with your Tom Ford, Vizier and Surat. Now, let me also swatch this shade of pink that I don't particularly like from Prada. So I, I love the shade itself, but it's just the texture. And yeah, it, it's not possible to see that on the swatches. It's really how it translates on the texture of my skin. But you can see that I think you can detect that it's thicker than the baked wet and dry shade by Tom Ford that is this one. Let me swatch this pink next to this Prada one. We may say that this is a subtle version of this one, maybe more muted. So the Chanel is a mixture of these two, but you cannot get this texture by combining these two because you will, the texture here will build up, you will have a thick effect instead this is very fine let me see maybe i have something similar in the suku range because there was this palette it was the pink permanent palette there's this shade that hmm, seems so close to the chanel one no it's more purple it's closer maybe to the prada one and this is another suku shade that again is more purple so the problem with these they look bruised on my eyes i don't like that this color for some reason is in my color palette but it emphasizes my under eye circles i don't like that so i much prefer a subtle color like this by chanel you can appreciate now with these comparisons how unique is this color by Chanel. So I'm so happy to have purchased this. This is a splurge that was worth the money, in my opinion, because of my preferences and my skin and the way I do my makeup. So let's focus on the Baroque palette. Let's start watching this color. This is the emerald green. And another thing that I want to tell you is that this is the color of the season. Green is popping up everywhere. Pat McGrath has released finally a palette with green. You see the shiny emollient quality. This is so nice. Okay, let's put it here.
I love this color. This is a shade of green that it has a touch of gray, but it doesn't blend out as a gray. Another thing that is very important. Since I live in a fashion capital that is Milan, I see a lot of advertisements and also people on the street, clothes shops, and a lot of them have green right now. So I bet that green will be very popular in all type of garments and in makeup as well. But what is new is that if you pay attention, this green is different because it's a um, is emerald green, is more on the cooler side. And yeah, I want to emphasize how, how shiny it is. So this is the peculiarity of this green. And yeah, it's a cooler tone green. It pairs beautifully with the plumish brown like this. I've seen this combo a lot popping up in, in shops. So yeah, I would actually invest in this green and seeing this kind of green all around actually convinced me to invest in this palette because I realized that maybe I don't have this green in my collection, but let's see, because I will compare it with the other greens here. I would personally wear it paired with the brown. This color combo reminds me of an amazing, an amazing palette by Victoria Beckham. Uh, she made a collection with Estee Lauder and it was epic. There was a, a, an amazing green there that resembles this, but this is the updated version with an amazing formula. So with this, you don't have texture on your lid. It's very smooth and shiny. It's a poshy class <laughs> uh, in the type of Victoria Beckham style. Now, let, let me do this comparison. It's not a poppy green like this. This is less wearable than I thought. So I know it's something totally different, but I just wanted to see. This is a sophisticated green, this one by Chanel. Because it has some darkness that makes it very nice. The desaturation point and the darkness of this shade makes it sophisticated. So even if it's a green, it's a wearable green, in my opinion. Okay, so let's see other greens. Guys, this is for really makeup lovers. Do you remember this? <laughs> This is a must have. This is from 2016 as well. Imprint du Désert. I just wanted to compare with this green. Yeah, it's different. It's more of a grass green. You may have this. This is again another masterpiece by Chanel. I remember that time very well. As you can see, this Chanel one is more bottle green is more bluish and this is more grass green but they are both magnificent the new chanel one from the bizans collection is finer this is thicker is a tad thicker but it's really a slight difference that you may not notice i would like to compare uh, again the green with a uh, suku that newest palette with greens by Pat reminds me a bit of this quad by Suku. Again, this is discontinued. It's recent, but discontinued. I believe it was from last year, last fall. Is a 117. The green is totally different. It's more of a sage green, but I wanted to compare it anyway, just to provide you, you know, a term for comparison. So you know how different. This is more olivey. So Chanel Bizance, Chanel Emprunt du Désert, and Suku 117. Another amazing green. I have so many good greens here. Just for reference, I want to show you the mothership number two. This green, this is totally different thing. It's even a duochrome. You see how flips, bluish, purplish. So it's another story, let's say. Sometimes I don't like the flipping shades because I want a certain type of color and when it flips, then it becomes another color. Another drawback of this green is that it has a blackened base. So if you shear it out, it doesn't stay green, it's more gray. While these other ones stay, all of them stay green. And maybe the closest is uh, something from the Blend Bunny. I wanted to include an indie brand. 
I have this, I think is the best palette, according to my taste, of course, made in China. No, still this, the Chanel one is bluish compared to Blend Bunny, that is more uh, olive. I think it's more of a grass green that is desaturated, but it doesn't have so much blue as I see here. So as you can tell, this is quite unique. This is another great shade. It's much more glittery than these ones. This texture that you can find in Chanel is maybe the closest to these kind of textures. Let me compare it to this one. Maybe this one. Let me also make a comparison to this one. This is very trendy, Instagram friendly, shiny texture. So these are the indie ones and this is Chanel. And maybe the Chanel one is more glittery, more sparkly while these ones are sparkly as well, but they have more of a base. But you can tell that we have the same amount of shine. So this competes with the most trendy eyeshadows that are very, very sparkly. It's nice, it's there. It may be something extra for, you know, glam nights. Like today, I'm going to a concert. So I may consider this one when I dress up for tonight. This is the, you, you see, the correspondent indie version of these ones by Chanel and Surat. Uh, if sheared out, it may be something closer to this, but this is more impactful. So all in all, what is my conclusion? My conclusion is that these were worth the splurge. And I have to say that my favorite are these two. And if I have to rank them, I would say, yeah, these are very different things because this is for every day, but still unique. And this is for events. I wouldn't use this alone, but it's perfect the pairing with this brown that is actually swatched here, right? This one from Crystal and this one. So this would rank the first because it's the most special quad. So if you want to splurge on something that you may use for every day, but you have options for extra glam night and yeah, you, you get for free. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I like to combine this palette as companion to other palettes. Personally, the way I like to spend my money, if I have to spend on luxury, I want something very extra and very special. And to me, this is the one. So this would be the first, the top, the top pick, in my opinion. This would be the second one because of uniqueness. It's still something unique in my collection. And this is a beautiful concept, but maybe you may skip it because I, I could dupe it. Let me swatch this shade too. So this is a greenish gold and I think I have a dupe for this. Sorry, I couldn't swatch live. It's very difficult to center the camera. So this is the same, of course. Two meaningful comparisons for this shade are, of course, with the gold standard. That's this one by Pat. This is from, yeah, the Bridgerton 2 palette, but there's also Gigabyte and uh, Subversive. So this is much amped up version. So I will swatch it here. And it's the same as the richer version. And then I have the Dior one. Do you remember this palette was a must from a couple of years back? And this is Nightbird. And there's this one that is more green, to be honest. So yeah, it's another thing. It's totally different. So I'm happy to report that this is unique as well. Is a point of antique gold that is greenish gold and still shiny and subtle that is nice to have. I don't know how to pair it yet because for sure I want to pair it with the other colors here. So I hope that these watches were helpful for you to decide and to have a 
better idea of the colors. I put all my rationality, my way of thinking in this video and I hope you support this channel.